Welcome to Five Formations. It's your boy Culture Cams, and today I'm joined none other by Rio Ferdinand. How are you today, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. And today we're going to be looking into the Ten Hag era so far. How Manchester United have lined up. Who should come in? Who should be taken out? Let's get into it. Of course, United lost recently to Real Sociedad. And it was a bit of a dull, dull game, uninspiring performance. But looking forward now into the Premier League fixtures, potentially, United have been on good form. You know, United have been playing well. United have been enjoying themselves under Ten Hag, four wins in a row in the Prem. Do you go with similarly the same 11? Is there any changes that you would make to, to the team? So, of course, we've been going De Gea in goal, Dallo, Varane, Martinez, Malassia, Eriksson, McTominay, Bruno, we've been going Anthony, Sancho and Rashford up mm. top. Will you stick with that team that, that beat Arsenal or is there any changes you make? I know a lot of people are talking about this area in particular because mm. of Casemiro in, in town, but McTominay is on good form at the moment. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I think the manager, I think you have to look at what how he set his stall out. I think he's very, very um, loyal to the guys that have got the team back on track. And uh, he's getting he's just rewards of that. The team has been on a good run in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, I've got no doubts that Casemiro will come into this team at some point. Um, and it will probably be McTominay that is, is sacrificed mm -hmm. for that. But you have to say that McTominay's stock has gone up, I'm sure, with the manager yeah. in recent weeks. And the fans. Since he's been here. And the fans. Um, and interestingly, I think when you listen to any of the players who have spoken, it's all always been about the positive vibes that are coming out is about clarity of positions and clarity of what the job title is on the pitch for themselves. Mm -hmm. They all feel and seem to have a better idea of what the manager wants of them. And it's playing out in the way that they play. You can see a clear identity in the way the team's playing mm -hmm. now. Yes, it's, it's a little bit more defensive than we anticipated, but I think in time that will change. But they seem to all know their roles and their duties. And mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing. And I think more than anybody, that's helped McTominay mm -hmm. and probably Bruno. Um, Facts. Because um, he seems more disciplined now. Um, I think the armband helps as well. The armband, that response. I think mm -hmm. he thrives under that, having the armband, and he needs that in his game. But I was watching, when I watched him last season, and I used to think, oh, Bruno does so much good stuff mm -hmm. with the ball in terms of chances he's creating and stuff. But when we're defending and the team's got a ball, you just go out sometimes. Yeah, and I know press. inside these guys are thinking, no, no, you can't. You don't want you to stay, 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 come mm -hmm. back and remain solid. But because of his tenacity and wanting to please everybody, mm -hmm. sometimes he just he will just go and just forget about... But I think this season he's been a lot more measured in when he goes and picking his times to go better. So it's and it's, it's better for the team. You you mentioned the, the solidity. It's a bit more defensive. Just talk to me about how important this back four has been, of course, you play centre-half and you know the importance of relationships. Can you go into that about how it's kind of transformed Man United lately? The foundations of any team that wins is this area, mm. the defenders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. so you know, strikers yeah. <laughs> and midfielders and all the glory hunters, this is the area that wins titles, yeah? <laughs> right, but, but no, I think what I've enjoyed seeing is there is a connection between all of them now. Mm. In the, I've not seen that for ages where if he makes a tackle... They can't wait to get over and yeah. celebrate. And, and some people go, oh, what's all that about him? But it's, it's, it's building a relationship between these guys, a bond that mm -hmm. you need if you're going to be successful. Dallo, he had a really tough game against Arsenal. Martinelli, first half, would yeah. give him a little bit of a doing over. But he grew in the game. And by the end of it, he was the one looking more confident than Martinelli yeah. Yeah. by the end of the game. And he's growing. And I, Dallo was someone I was thinking, I don't know if he's going to be good enough for Man United. Hey, Dallo he's stops. Impro he's improving there. all the time. Mm -hmm. There's more room for improvement, 100%. Yeah. But I think these two have been like, in, when playing together, I think only conceded one goal. Mm. And that's, that is, these two are really forming a solid partnership and they, they, they play well together. One, one wants to do that behind Varane and one wants to go on press. Um, so, I, I th listen, I think they'll still make mistakes and I think his, his height will be exploited at times. Mm -hmm. But if you continue getting the, the, the performances that we're getting at the moment out of him over a season, you'll take the odd game where he might get exploited for his height. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that Ten Hag done actually was remove stopping De David De Gea from playing with the ball. The first two games against Brighton and Brentford, mm. De Gea was trying to play and mm. it was getting in so many we're getting in so many bad situations. But now, literally every time he gets it, he goes long. In the long run, maybe he's not gonna want that, but immediately now. 
I think it's making De Gea a little bit more confident, a little bit more assured that he doesn't have to do anything else mm. except on be a natural, a natural yeah. goalkeeper. And I think that's made a massive yeah. impact in the team. Going forward, though, it hasn't been classic Man United, mm -hmm. in, all, in all honesty. I still think we're waiting for that game where we put three, four, five past the team. What do you think about this front three? Because obviously Anthony has just come in, mm -hmm. so he's a unknown quantity at the moment. But Rashford at nine, he's done well. Jaden Sancho, I actually want to talk about him in particular because he's in a situation where England maybe is up and down. His future for England is not looking too bright. And United fans are now starting to look at him, want more, expect more. What is it with Jaden Sancho for you that maybe he's not particularly clicking right now? Or do you think, I think it is clicking? I think what's clicking is he's getting goals. He's getting in these areas, hmm. which I like. And you want your wingers to be going in here and getting goals. And I think he's done it done against Liverpool. I think against Southampton, he scored a goal. So he, that's an area that where I would have been definitely demanding of him. Also assists. I think with Jaden, which people probably didn't realise, because he's obviously playing away from in, in the Bundesliga, mm -hmm. and you got to see him as like, Jaden Sancho needs parts of the team to be functioning perfectly for him to perform. He needs that mm -hmm. consistently outside him, which he, he had this as well. Which he had at, um, uh, at with Dortmund. Hakimi with Dortmund. Yeah. So he's a, he's a decoy, or he can use him, and that takes a defender there space for him to go into. But he also needs a number nine there, mm. who he can use as a wall. So he can play because I don't think there's many better when he, when he plays and runs. Mm -hmm. When he plays and runs and ups the speed of his game, he's brilliant. The thing that I think some fans will be sitting there going, I didn't, under, didn't anticipate, is that when he gets in these areas, he isn't, he isn't like a, a sacker, do you know what I mean? Or a Sterling who wants to just get the ball and go bang straight mm -hmm. out the fullback and, and beat him. I want to see more of that from Jaden. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's confidence as well. He's come in and last season didn't go as well as he wanted it, I'm sure. I think so. This season, I, I want him to get the fullback one v one and go right. You're mine, mm -hmm. bang, and, and and blitz him. I think uh, another issue with him as well is that is the starting positions for me. Mm. Like in these areas, if Jay Sanchez should get in the ball in these areas, I'm confident that he can do something because I think in the final third, he's he might be our best player. I think he's got eye for pass and he's composed in front of goal. But he picks up the ball in these areas mm. too much. And That's as you mentioned, if you're not Saka, if you're not Sterling or Rashford, maybe to kick it down the line. James mm. Sanchez is not going to do nothing here. If he gets it here, in between a centre half and a full, but then you're cooking. You know what I mean? But like but you say, that this is the, the team's building. It's growing. Mm. So at the moment, they're they're, they're starting here, and the, the wingers are probably receiving the ball more often than not here. I think as time goes by and confidence goes by, this is where Ten Hag wants his team playing most of the time. Mm -hmm. Up here, that's yeah. where he's going to want them, and winning the ball up here. So when you win the ball up here, Jaden Sancho is winning the ball and getting the ball here. Mm -hmm. That is more of a threat. You mentioned that Sancho is probably going to need someone to be bouncing passes off. You've got Malchus Rashford up here, who maybe is not particularly that type of striker. He's more off the last man, cause issues that way. Do you think maybe, not to say Rashford has to get dropped or anything like that, but do you think maybe that's where Martial is needed? Because I think, I actually think, funny enough, Martial improves everyone around him. I think Martial is needed for Sancho. I think if you look at the combination between Martial and Rashford, it's good. I think when you look at Anthony, we're looking at another player that's going to need maybe some guys inside as well. I genuinely think maybe in this role, Martial is probably the most needed. I'm really interested to see when he's fit again, mm. where he's going to get in. Because I know speaking to people at the club, when they, the management staff came in in the summer, they were really impressed with him. Okay. They were surprised that they knew he was a good player. But we know all the stories that go around around all the players, but they were like, well, we didn't realise he was this good. Mm. And Rashford, to be fair. So the, the way that he's improved is you think to yourself, well, if he comes in, and obviously you've got Cristiano Ronaldo as yeah, well. Yeah, So Can't go without I think Marcus has, has, has improved an element in his game in bringing people into the game. That's yeah. been good. That's what I've enjoyed in his game, assists and, and getting his goals. Um, but I think, listen, we have to understand, I think that Ronaldo comes into this team at some point. I'd mm. be very surprised if he doesn't. You think so? And scores 100%. goals. I think he's, got, he, he's guaranteeing you goals, mm. man. So, you, got, so, you got back your boy, in it. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, but Marcus is my boy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I want him to do well. Yeah. And you've and Anthony, that's the unknown quantity in the team. Let what do you think breathe. about him? Let him breathe. That's, that's, that's your words for him. There. Let him breathe. <laughs> I think he's here. He's gonna, you see his, his little tricks the other day? So yeah, yeah. I think he's going to try and entertain the fans, but he didn't have the greatest game against Sosada. But I think going forward, I would keep this same 11 as well. Crazy that I wouldn't have Casemiro in the 11 right now, which is. Casemiro mad. comes in for me, bro. I've got to be honest. So, wait. So, so next game, you're taking out McTominay? I think so. Yeah, I just think that you can't have someone like him who's yeah, that good. I hear you. I hear you. You can't win five Champions League the way he and be integral. Mm. 
and still and be like he's still young. Mm. He's thirty, yeah, only thirty. Thirty years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, listen, Casemiro for me is the best in his position. But when, yeah, game, so. I think he is as well. Yeah. But but McTominay is doing justice in there. He's, he's been brilliant. Yeah, and guys, that was an in-depth look at Manchester United going forward and the Ten Hag era right now. Let us know in the comments if you'll make any changes. Should Casemiro come straight in? Should Cristiano Ronaldo come straight in? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. And we are out. Best midfielder in Premier League history? I wouldn't say he's the best, but he gave me the most trouble. Vieira. Was it? Mate, he was a machine. <laughs> like, honestly, it was like, I just did only, I felt like an under 14s. <laughs> I beat him in the air once. I did, yeah, I know. That's, how, that's, 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 that's all I got.